How can you tell if what your partner is doing is a red flag for an abusive relationship or if it's just because relationships are hard? Many people don't realize that their partner is going to end up being abusive until it's too late. How can you decrease your chances that you or someone you love will end up in this situation? Do you think someone in your life might be in an abusive situation, but you don't know how to talk to them about it? In this video, I will be talking about how to recognize red flags in abusive relationships and how the abuse can continue legally even after the relationship ends. The information contained in this video has been collected from hundreds of survivors of domestic abuse, and I hope that you will watch it through to the end and share it with all the important people in your life so that they can become aware of these red flags as well, perhaps before it's too late. Domestic abuse is about power and control. When these situations end up before a judge, the judge often tries to understand the severity and frequency of the abuse to determine whether or not it is relevant. This is a grave mistake. According to the Australian Bench Book, some victims may never experience any form of actual or threatened physical violence, and the homicide is the first incident. In these cases, there may be other important signifiers of risk, such as physical violence outside the intimate relationship, misuse of alcohol or drugs, intense jealousy towards the victim, or exercising a high level of prolonged control over the victim's daily activities and life. Again, the first time that a man is physically violent towards his wife might be when he murders her. It's imperative for everyone involved to learn these signs, not just victims, but judges, lawyers, police, social services, services, psychologists, and anyone else involved so that they can intervene before it's too late. Here are just some of the many signs to look out for. Coercion and threats, domination, making choices for his victim, neglect, intimidation, emotional abuse, economic abuse, for example, perhaps not letting you spend the money freely or maybe you don't even know where the money is or have access to it, leveraging male privilege, like saying that the woman has to do all the housework or that the wife should obey her husband or making comments about how all women are or treating her like a child who has to do what he says because he's a man isolating his victim so that she doesn't have a support system minimizing his actions saying that she's being unreasonable or that she's crazy denying that he did or said something gaslighting making you question reality getting another person to make excuses for his behavior, blaming the victim, playing on insecurities, giving the silent treatment, spinning it all back around to look like it's the victim's fault, jealousy and possessiveness, constantly insisting to be next to you, constantly calling and demanding to know where you are or what you're doing, not respecting you or your property or your privacy. He fails to take responsibility for his mistakes or his apologies turn out to be empty. He's super emotional or always feels like he's a victim. He blames others for making him feel a certain way or for making him be violent. Set in mood changes, like he's two different people. Any verbal abuse or threats, there should not even be one time. He should never say anything nasty to you. He should never threaten you, ever. Any physical violence, not only towards you, but even breaking things or throwing things ever. He should never do this. Being unrealistic or exaggerating in a good or a bad way, for example, even if he gives you way too much flattery. Using culture, religion, or immigration status to trap or guilt the victim. Shaming her when she contradicts him. Using stereotypes about the victim's country of origin against the victim, perhaps saying the courts won't be favorable to her if she leaves him because of her country of origin, telling her that since she's an immigrant that she's never going to win, reproductive coercion to trap the victim, complaining if he doesn't get sex, using children during pregnancy or after birth to further trap the victim, love bombing and future faking to trap a victim that he's just met, for example, love bombing might look like quick engagements, quick commitment, claims you have a great love story when you haven't even known each other for that long, he's too attached considering the time you've been together, perhaps he's just showering you with so much of his time and energy that it's disproportionate to the amount of time that you've known each other, or it's just too intense. 
future faking might look like promising that he's gonna get a better job, that he's gonna earn more money. He, he promises something, but then he doesn't follow through. He might ask you to move away to an unfamiliar place because it would be so romantic to just run off together. And litigation abuse after separation because it may be the only way to keep control over his victim who has made the decision to leave. Making excessive motions, asking unrelated and personal things in discovery just to pry unrelated info out of you, suing you in multiple courts in multiple jurisdictions for the same thing, especially if he lives far away, making false criminal accusations against you, forcing you to constantly stop what you're doing and appear in court, forcing you to keep paying for a lawyer to defend yourself, trying to use a court so that you're left with nothing, not so that he necessarily gets more of the pie in a divorce, but just so that you are left with nothing. In other words, he's willing to fight and have all the money go to lawyers just so that you both end up with nothing because his goal is to destroy your life. Using the court basically to not allow you to move on with your life because he wants you to always be thinking of him. It's basically the idea behind litigation abuse. Judges need to be aware of this because while it's legal for people to file for divorce or to sue over other things, and there's a proper judicial procedure to be followed, judges need to make sure that they're not being used as a pawn to further control this victim to not allow her to move on with her life and to force her into further emotional and financial ruin. Judges should administer justice, not be tools of the perpetrator to continue the abuse. Many of these are summarized in the power and control wheels found on the website of Domestic Abuse Intervention Project in Duluth, Minnesota that I will link to below and which I will talk about at length in future videos. Again, it's important to remember when there is any accusation of domestic abuse, it needs to be thoroughly investigated. Don't look at it like, well, he only does one or two of these things, but not all these other things. If someone is showing coercive behaviors, if his victim is terrified of him, you need to take it seriously and you need to investigate further for their protection because these things are not normal in a relationship and your action or inaction can be what protects them or what makes the situation worse. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, one in four women and one in nine men experience severe intimate partner physical violence, intimate partner contact sexual violence, and or intimate partner stalking with impacts such as injury, fearfulness, post-traumatic stress disorder, use of victim services, interaction of sexually transmitted diseases, etc. 72% of all murder suicides involve an intimate partner. 94% of the victims of these murder suicides are female. 1 in 15 children are exposed to intimate partner violence each year, and 90% of these children are eyewitnesses to this violence. In this video and others, I'll focus on male on female violence because that was the type of research conducted by domestic abuse intervention programs in Duluth, Minnesota, and all of the survivors who have shared information with the presenter are women. However, violence against men does exist, and so I wanted to acknowledge that here, even if it's not the focus of these particular videos that I'm making at the moment. If you find yourself in a relationship like this, it's not your fault. It's a problem with how you have been treated. Good relationships in real life are better than the movies. It's not a fantasy. Good men do exist. If you feel discouraged because you're in a bad relationship right now and you feel like you're settling or you feel like you have to settle, it may be because you're looking in all the wrong places or you're getting the wrong advice. If you know about Christianity, think of how Joseph would treat Mary. Kindly, right? Think of how Joseph would feel if somebody was doing these things to Mary. There are Josephs out there in this world. And please, if you know one, tell me of the good men in this world in the comments below so that other women can see that good men in this world do exist. And you should hold out until you find the man who's right for you. However, also look out for love bombing and future faking. If you find yourself in one of these relationships, please see the description below for some information. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and share with all the other women in your life and the Josephs out there who you'll tell me about in the comments below because I am right now just getting started and there is so much more to come. Thank you.